So good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, 60 Days, 60 Voices from the Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship. Uh, what we're trying to do is to have conversations every day across the next 60 days with different uh, organizations that work with small businesses and are trying to think about how they can small businesses get through this crisis. As you can imagine, uh, this is, as you know, this is one of the most unprecedented crises that India and certainly the world has seen. And this is an, this is an extremely important opportunity for all of us to work together uh, because, I mean, the, just the magnitude of the crisis is so much that uh, without we're unlikely to make a dent uh, into supporting small businesses. Uh, to, in today's conversation, we have uh, Prabhat, who's the CEO of Amin Foundation. Uh, Prabhat, it'd be great to start the conversation with just some context uh, on Grameen Foundation and your work with small businesses. Sure. Uh, thanks, Ashwin. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's fantastic that, you know, Game is, is organizing this conversation with, uh, with a series of conversations, in fact, with, with different people. I think it's absolutely needed in, in, in this time. Just to give a perspective about Grameen Foundation. So Grameen Foundation has been working around the globe for over 20 years now to support micro entrepreneurs. Initially, it started off with access to credit using the famous uh, you know, Grameen Joint Liability Lending Mechanism, which has been replicated the world over by hundreds of institutions benefiting hundreds of millions of people. Uh, subsequently, we have also diversified into areas like capacity building. So we do a lot of work on things like you know, people solutions, like you know, human resource development. We have our own uh, e-learning application called GLEAP, which stands for Grameen Learning Platform, which is an Android-based platform, which is used by the frontline workers uh, to offer various kinds of solutions and build capacity uh, of, of the people in things like financial education, digital financial literacy, et cetera. And plus, of course, uh, we also are focused on promoting self-employment uh, uh, through an approach called Grameen Mitra, uh, which uh, is a network of last mile uh, entrepreneurs, uh, all women, uh, which who bring a wide range of products and services, uh, both financial and non-financial services, as well as uh, custom education uh, for the customers uh, so that they can uh, learn about those new products and services and onboard them through an assisted uh, mechanism. So yeah, I mean, Grameen is into a lot of uh, you know uh, ways uh, supporting uh, both access to credit as well as access to various capacity building, uh, which is necessary for uh, micro enterprises to to flourish. So those and uh, that's in a, in a brief about our work. And uh, so I think clearly you have a lot of different feedback loops from the ground to so the e-learning platform as well as your uh, I think entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs on the ground. What are some of the challenges you're hearing uh, about micro entrepreneurs that they are facing during this crisis that are kind of critical and immediate uh, that need to be solved for? So I think as we all know, this crisis, and you mentioned this is a, an unprecedented crisis. Never, you know, never ever something like this has, has happened before. So suddenly, you know, in a matter of weeks, you know, entire economy has come to a standstill. The cash flows have stopped and, you know, uh, enterprises have, have no business coming in, no cash coming in. Uh, and they hardly have any savings. Uh, so as a result, uh, most of the enterprise have had to dip into their working capital to just to meet their consumption needs. Uh, they are unable to also pay their workers in case they're employing workers. Of course, you know, there are very few enterprises who uh, employ workers. Most of them are kind of you know, own account enterprises. So for them, it's like diverting their working capital to meet their household consumption needs. Now, the bigger challenge is that this uh, crisis that we have got into uh, the lockdown may end in another two, three weeks time. That's fine. But the economic impact of this is going to go on for a very, very long time because it will not be going back to uh, the old times uh, again. It will be a new normal. And we have to understand what that new normal might look like. There are many industries which are expected to be uh, permanently disrupted. You know, we are talking about things like you know, uh, you talk about, you know, tourism, hospitality, arts and entertainment, sports, which create millions of jobs. And they won't be going back to the previous normal, uh, you know, even in six months time. We're talking about a huge disruption. And it's also uh, going to create some new opportunities for new kind of, uh, you know, enterprise to flourish. We have seen, for example, how Amazon or, you know, e-commerce based platforms can be so effective or digital platform based business models can be so, so effective in such times, uh, so, so much needed. How e-learning can suddenly, you know, uh, become a need of our for, for everyone. 
uh, how things like video conferencing become so popular. Uh, so people need to connect uh, will will not go away. People's social need to kind of be able to talk to each other, to have fun, to and of course beyond the, the, the basic needs will continue, which will create new business opportunities. But you know, if an enterprise has to tap into those new business opportunities, they would require not only uh, capital but very patient capital and uh, access to uh, building the capacity in uh, perfecting those new business models and benefiting from those new, uh, new business models. Sure. And so picking up on the two themes that you were, you really talked about, one is kind of the uh, access, access to working capital and liquidity immediately. And the other one being kind of emerging opportunities and how uh, entrepreneurs can tap into that. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your own work in kind of enabling this, uh, these two particular kind of streams of thought and interventions uh, for micro entrepreneurs? And also, I think uh, more broadly, what have you seen the ecosystem uh, how have you seen the ecosystem respond to uh, these two particular uh, one one challenge and one opportunity? Sure, I mean uh, I, I I must say that uh, I have been really very very uh, positively uh, you know uh, influenced by the generosity that we see all around in the society. Anybody who can do anything is coming forward and asking, okay, how can I help? That's the great thing about our society and, you know, tells a lot about you know, that we really care and we want to help, provided we know, okay, whom to help, how to help. I think that's, the, you know, a little bit less understood. So mm -hmm. for us, you know, I think you know, one of the most important things that we uh, can do is to inform everybody, everybody, as to how they can help. Uh, at Grameen Foundation, uh, we have just launched our own, uh, you know, crowdfunding uh, initiative. Uh, through which we intend to support 6,000 poorest families in, in the state of Bihar and in the Vidarbha region of Maharashtra. Now that has, uh, you know, uh, that's going to uh, support two segments. One is, of course, extreme poor and, and vulnerable segments. And it will be like unconditional cash transfer because we believe that in a crisis situation like this, you know, you have to, you know, put money in the hands of people and give them the power to decide, okay, what's the best use of that money for them rather than us deciding, you know, how to use the money. So that's why we are making it unconditional cash transfer. And we are kind of you know, hoping to raise five crores at least for this initiative through the crowdfunding platform. And if anybody is interested, they can go to, go to the Milap website or the Give India website and you know, support to, uh, to these causes. The second segment uh, which this initiative will support is the small informal businesses. Of course, we know that you know, their cash flow and business has suddenly you know, gone uh, completely. So uh, to give them a one-time cash grant uh, so that they can uh, restart their, their business. So as, as a kind of a working capital grant, that's uh, you know, uh, an initiative that we at Drumming Foundation have, have launched. And I believe that uh, at least for next three months, uh, organizations uh, should really focus on these kind of initiatives. Unconditional cash transfer, because I mentioned, uh, India has a very powerful system of uh, direct benefit transfer, bank accounts for everyone, mobile phones for everyone, unique identification. So those platforms give us the capability to identify the most needy and vulnerable people and to, in a very transparent and efficient manner, give them the support in very real time. So it's very scalable, very efficient, and very transparent. That's why I would say that in the immediate term, uh, supporting you know, those kind of programs is, is needed. But of course, for the medium to long term, it should be about how to rebuild the enterprise and, and the economy which I mentioned, you know, uh, will require uh, access to capital and access to new capacity building. So focus on things like e-learning modules and how, you know, majority of people uh, can, can use that will, will be needed. So uh, maybe I can also add that we have to look at, uh, you know, uh, we have to segment people into different categories. Like when you talk about micro and uh, micro enterprises, you know, there is, clearly you know two two categories uh, so one is the informal segment and that part of the micro enterprises like you know about 80 to 90 percent of the enterprise are informal and their uh, support need will be different from the uh, the formal ones so let me kind of you know elaborate on these these two points for the informal micro enterprises i think uh, what will be most helpful is to give them just a cash grant or unconditional cash transfer to replenish their working capital first Secondly, to support them in the process of them becoming formal, because you know, as long as they remain uh, informal, they remain vulnerable and they cannot benefit from whatever the formal sector can bring uh, to, to them, like mudra loans or whatever. So the support to uh, the process of them uh, getting formal. Thirdly, because they have not had a credit history, 
government can think of setting up some kind of a credit guarantee mechanism so that the MFIs and banks can lend to these people who are coming into the credit system for the first time uh, without the risk of uh, loan losses or, or portfolio quality. So some kind of that, that uh, credit guarantee mechanism for these first time borrowers who are just coming from the informal sector to the formal enterprise. Now coming to the second, second category which I talked about which is the formal micro and small enterprises. I would say that you know, some of the measures which will be really helpful is a much, much, much longer moratorium period on the loan. Uh, a low cost uh, loan. So perhaps, you know, things like PLR minus 4% kind of loans, just the way, you know, we subsidize agricultural lending, same way micro enterprise loans also to be subsidized for all loans below say rupees 10 lakhs, uh, you know, that that'd be helpful. Thirdly, supporting their uh, you know, access to skill development opportunities through e-learning as well as through mentorship so that uh, they can be guided about new business models and developing their business plans and approaching uh, the financial institutions for, for support to that and also supporting them to onboard the digital platforms which they can use for uh, their uh, business management, whether it is about raw material sourcing or it is about you know, uh, marketing of, of their uh, products or it about uh, you know, advertising, any, any of those things. So uh, helping them onboard the digital platforms will be uh, absolutely uh, helpful. And uh, Prabhat, I think this, this discussion on using this opportunity to bring uh, informal enterprises on the full thing that we've also been having at game uh, i think I, I, given given the given the challenge realizing many of these entrepreneurs and given how difficult it has been uh, and given the context of this crisis what are uh, quick uh, not not very onerous or not very difficult uh, but high value proposition pathways to uh, you know incentivize or nudge informal enterprises to formalize what what are some of those ways that uh, can are kind of quick to deploy ways uh, formalization in this context do you think so definitely uh, the, the the word that you mentioned nudge is i think the, the most important thing uh, so incentivizing and nudging uh, will be uh, definitely helpful uh, what is also important is to uh, address the kind of fears or anxieties people have uh, with regard to becoming formal. They believe that if I become formal, I will have to file my tax return, I'll have to pay GST, I'll have to pay income taxes, I'll come under the minimum wages uh, kind of issues, I'll, you know, uh, the, 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 the labor department, you know, might, might come and kind of, you know, harass it. So I think it's, it's important to, uh, to encourage everyone not to worry about the costs of compliance because in the long run, if you're formal, the benefits of compliance will be way more than these costs. And also, I think, you know, if, if your business grows, then, you know, you should definitely be paying more to your uh, employees. You should be covering them under social security and gratuity pension, whatever. Because, you know, you, know, you can do that if, if you grow. And to grow, it's, it's critical that you become formal. So I think addressing, addressing some of those concerns is, is important, number one. Number two, uh, the, the process of formalization, you know, the simpler it can be made, the better it will be. I mean, even today, if you just want to register a private limited company, it, it's not, a, you, know, uh, you know, one can do a lot of things digitally these days, but the compliance requirements are the same, whether, you know, whether you are having a turnover of, of 25 lakhs or 25 crores or 25,000 crores. So in that sense, one should really look at, the, the, the government needs to look at how we can reduce the compliance burden for enterprise having a turnover of below 70 crore or below 100 crore. That would be really a, a, a good uh, incentive. And of course, you know, giving them some kind of setting up some kind of, a, you know, let's say a formalization support fund, which can be used to build capacity of the enterprise, how to become formal, how to register, how to get a GST registration, how to file your you know, tax returns, you know, how to benefit from various schemes that the government has when you become formal, whether it is about working capital subsidy, or there's, you know, multiple kind of, you know, schemes that the government has for small scale industries and, and uh, enterprises. So a small fund uh, to educate the entrepreneurs on, on those will also be helpful. So yeah, I mean, those are some, some ideas I, I, I had. No, that's fantastic. And I think uh, you've definitely covered uh, one of the questions we had is, uh, what is what are some of the call to actions for, um, uh, to action for government uh, that we need to kind of uh, provide so that formal businesses are supported? And I think both in your uh, conversation, or both in your note about kind of formalization as well as uh, liquidity and working uh, I think that's quite clear. Yeah. So I was so I was asking you what uh, thinking about an alliance and a collaborative approach 
uh, and contextualizing that to the work that Grameen is doing. How do you think about uh, what the kind of support that uh, you know alliance partners or different partners in the ecosystem can provide Grameen Foundation in bolstering its work? Uh, that's question number one. And question number two is more around what are some of the uh, Key interventions we need to we need to kind of coalesce around as an alliance. What are some interventions that need an alliance approach in this crisis? So uh, you know, definitely, an, an an alliance can do a lot of things. Uh, you know, first and foremost, to facilitate networking and collaboration between various actors. That's one. Secondly, a very important the role that the you know an, an alliance can play is to knowledge sharing and dissemination of best practices, what works, what doesn't work, and what have we learned. Third is to promote and facilitate uh, coordination so that people don't duplicate if somebody else is already doing something. And instead of duplication, you know, uh, looking at the complementarity and, and synergy. So, you know, that's, that can, can kind of work and be done, you know, very effectively by, by uh, uh, network and, and, and uh, alliance. Uh, especially, uh, as I mentioned, you know, both in the area of, uh, you know, I, I mentioned three kinds of support which will be needed. One is in the area of capacity building. Second is in the area of pure grant-based uh, support, whereby you don't expect the, the, the money uh, to, to come back. It's a pure grant. And thirdly, you know, in terms of market-based solution, which is like in the form of investment or in the form of uh, access to credit. So I think, you know, as, as an alliance, if, if uh, you know, an, an alliance can look at the individual needs of various organizations where they are supporting different enterprises in different parts of the country, and then help in aggregating those uh, demands uh, for these three different kinds of resources, and then present that as, as a collaboration, as, as a collaborative effort uh, to the stakeholders, whether it is a large group of uh, investors, uh, both domestic as well as international, as well as to, to the government. I think that, you know, uh, those, those three, four things are is something really uh, helpful uh, for, for Alliance to do. Excellent. Uh, Pravad, I think those are the questions for me. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And I hope, I hope this conversation gets useful to you. Absolutely, Ashwin. Thanks Absolutely. so much for organizing this. And I hope that, you know, uh, this, this initiative by, by Game Found finds much more traction among stakeholders and everyone. And, you know, because, uh, you know, I'll also like to use this opportunity to, to reiterate one key message, which is that this is a time for all of us to be generous in our individual capacity. So my call to action to everyone, absolutely everyone, is please look at the needs of other people who are less fortunate than you, yours, you are and see how you can support. It's the time to be empathetic. It's the time to be generous and support. So that's how we can kind of come out of this crisis. Thank you, Ashwin. Thank you, Anshu. Thank you.